Okay. That's what I'm making this video. I have to be quick because I'm in pain. I'm really disturbed after reading some recent uh, emails. Uh, some of you may know I'm, I've recently become a reverend. I've actually been a church-going woman my whole life since I was a little girl. Um, I've gone to church and read the Bible, and, and I find that to be noble. And uh, I wanted to get my documentation and uh, my credentials, and, and so now I'm, I'm a reverend. However, I'm still a terrible, intractable pain sufferer. And I'm really disturbed over some, some things, some emails that I read. Some of my followers who have intractable pain, particularly Christine in New Jersey. Um, Christine, I'm so sorry you're going through all this. And I think it's just terrible. And I want you to know, we're not going to stop fighting, okay? This has just begun. Everything takes time. Do not give up. Do not give up. I've been doing research. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. New Jersey jumped the gun back in May. And they implemented some heavy duty laws. And so now we have a lot of people suffering needlessly in New Jersey in severe intractable pain because of their new laws. They kind of jumped ahead of all the national guidelines. They're more strict than any of the national guidelines now when it comes to pain. This is my heating pad for my for my shoulders and neck right now because it hurts to do this. Okay, so um, I just want to let you know, Christine, that you've got to hang on. We're going to work on this. We're going to figure this out, okay? We're going to find out what we have to do. You should not be suffering in your condition with no pain medication and with all that whatever crap they're giving you. Uh, to the physicians out there and to the, the Department of Health and Human Services who's running the things now, to the CDC, to the DEA, to the Secretaries of State, to our governors and senators, and to Donald Trump, our president. There's a problem in the opioid crisis that needs to be addressed. And that is the exclusion here, the failure to look into patients who are in severe intractable pain, who cannot get the proper care. Uh, it's unavailable to them. And so we're being left in the cold with the opioid crisis going on and the guidelines going on. We're forced to see regular physicians or sometimes pain clinics that are uneducated uh, when it comes to intractable pain. Uh, they know about a little bit of back pain, but they don't know about more severe conditions. And so uh, I'm asking you, I'm begging you to please consider the fact that there are many people out there who are not addicts who take opioid pain medication for legitimate reasons. They're taking opioid pain medications for legitimate reasons, not for reasons of whatever, getting high or because they're addicted. Um, Surely, the addiction factor is always there with, with any addictive medication, uh, any addictive anything. Uh, you can become addicted to alcohol just as easily 
you know, if, if you drink alcohol every single day, you can become addicted to it. And that's a deadly thing as well. Uh, I want you to know that, you know, I'm nominated for the, the pain task force because there, there are gaps and inconsistencies in the best practices when it comes to the opioid pain medication. Uh, that I want, I think that I am a good uh, nominee for this because I, number one, am an intractable pain sufferer. Number two, I live in a rural community where there is lack of care. We can't get proper care out here. Palliative care is non-existent. Uh, we just don't have access to the proper care uh, that we need. So uh, these gaps and inconsistencies uh, need to be addressed. Now, everyone jumped the gun with the opioid crisis because there are so many out there who are abusing these medications or really what it is is uh, heroin addicts and it's leading back to well they started out by taking prescription opioids or patients who had something happen to them adult patients a lot of them and they were prescribed opioid medications and either they got addicted or the pain just never went away and they ended up taking too much of their medication and died. Now I know that there are some statistics where that happened, but there are much more statistics that have not even been judged yet, have not even, I mean, they're, they're not even out there yet because you have not investigated enough into the patients that have non-cancerous problems with intractable pain, no cures, and they're going to be in the condition they're in for the rest of their life and they're suffering. And you haven't done studies on the benefits of the opioid medication for those who will need it for the rest of their lives. Now, I personally have been on opioid medication for 32 years since a drunk driver crashed into me going 85 miles an hour while I was on the back of a motorcycle at only 95 pounds and 18 years of age. I was torn apart and was not expected to live. In fact, I beat all the odds. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I spent 32 years fighting pain and living life and doing the best I could. And uh, I even had a job and excelled, several jobs. I excelled at my jobs. I was a manager uh, at one place. And uh, I was on my way to becoming a trainer and or manager or coach, whatever you want to call it, at another place before they decided to cut my medications in half. And then they decided to start changing the medications around because of uh, the guidelines changing. And I couldn't get out of bed. And I spent a lot of time mis in misery and I couldn't move and calling in sick. It ended up, uh, my work knew what was going on with me and they worked with me. I had to go on FMLA, uh, the Family Medical Leave Act. And I was able to use that in such a way as to when I couldn't make it out of bed one day, uh, I would call in and they would let me you know, mark it up for that many hours until I exhausted those hours. And then I had to make the choice of going on disability and no longer working. So and that was just from them taking my medications that were fine and were working for me and adjusting them around, reducing them, changing them. I'm still not back to where I should be at this point. 
and the guidelines are preventing that from happening. So most of my time is spent here in this bed with the seating pad on and I'm miserable. Now, uh, before I made this video, I did take my medication so I could make this video uh, the best I could, but I'm in a lot of pain right now. You probably can even see it on my face. My blood pressure is probably extremely high because this is kind of hurting me. Uh, we've got to make some changes. Things have to be done because there are some serious gaps in this attack um, on opioids and physicians prescribing them. Uh, there's a problem with pharmacies not filling prescriptions. And, you know, there are a lot of patients out there who do not have another choice. If you could hook up my body, my pain, to your body and flip a switch and feel my pain, I guarantee you that you would. Okay, so I got interrupted there. Sorry about that. So anyway, so my point is that we need to be addressed. Now, for all of those real quick out there, all of my followers and all of you in intractable pain, and especially you, Christine, I want to read you the lyrics to one of my favorite songs. And just remember, and I hope this gives you a little strength and hope, okay? This is a song called Fight the Good Fight by Triumph. And here's how the lyrics go. The days grow shorter and the nights are getting long. Feels like we're running out of time. Every day, it seems much harder telling right from wrong. You gotta read between the lines. Don't get discouraged. Don't be afraid. We can make it through another day. Make it worth the price we pay. The good book says it's better to give than to receive. I do my best to do my part. Nothing in my pockets and nothing up my sleeve. I keep my magic in my heart. Keep up your spirit. Keep up your faith. I'm counting on you. You know what you've got to do. Fight the good fight every moment, every minute, every day. Fight the good fight every moment. It's your only way. All your life you've been waiting for your chance where you'll fit into the plan but you're the master of your own destiny so give and take the best that you can you think a little more money will this is for the CDC <laughs> and for the government and those attacking us you think a little more money will buy your soul some rest you better think of something else instead. You're so afraid of being honest with yourself. You better take a look inside your head. Nothing is easy. Nothing good is free. But I can tell you where to start. Take a look inside your heart. There's an answer in your heart. Fight the good fight every moment every minute, every day. Fight the good fight every moment. Make it worth the price that we pay. Every moment of your lifetime, every minute, every day. Fight the good fight every moment. Make it worth the price we pay. That's an uplifting song to me, and it's very true. We've got to stay and fight the good fight, you guys. We're worth it. And for those of you out there who are ignoring intractable pain patients, I want to give you this message. You're gonna cause more deaths 
putting intractable pain patients on the sidelines due to suicide merely to get out of the pain, assisted suicide to get out of the pain. Those of us who have intractable pain have very high blood pressure because of the pain. We could have heart attacks and strokes. And that's on you guys, you who are not putting us in the picture. Now, I agree with the opioid crisis fight. I agree that we need to stop addiction. But you must take into consideration intractable pain patients. Make that a factor. That's important. Make that part of all of this. Make sure that every state, every rural area, every town is giving these patients proper care, the proper doses of opiates, not taking them away from them, getting them palliative care where needed, getting them home health care where needed, making sure that we're not suffering it must be done because if it's not done we're all going to join together and fight back there will be a day that you will regret leaving us out okay i suggest that you look inside your heart and do the right thing make sure that those of us who are in intractable pain are not left out of the equation. That would be a horrible mistake on your part. Now, I can't do this anymore because this is killing me. This is almost 20 minutes and I'm in an awkward position and I need to get on my back with my heating pad. So I'm going to have to leave now, but I'm going to leave some links, like I said, uh, in, in my my posting of this video uh, so read the additional stuff put it on pause if you have to to write it down that's what I do when I need to write it down there are some uh, some links that are gonna give you stories and show you what's going on some links to give you you know your rights and uh, Christine I'm gonna be working with you directly if you will just email me your phone number I will be calling you and we're going to have to discuss some things and figure out what we can do for you so we can get you taken care of. Uh, I'm still fighting my fights, but it's a good fight and I've got to trust God that it's going to work out because there's no other way I can go. I got to keep trying and so I'm going to keep on fighting. For all of you pain patients out there and myself and uh, I pray for you addicts that you stop doing what you're doing because you're the reason that we're in this predicament and I know that addiction is hard I I cannot say that it's your fault that we're in this predicament really because it's a disease. Addiction is a disease, but get help. Make it easier for those who really need this medication to be able to receive it. Stop only thinking of yourself. You're losing everything and you know it as it is. You've got to stop. Allow the doctors to do their job and to treat patients like us with respect, not like we're addicts, but with respect. And because of the addicts out there in the world, we are being categorized in the same, in the same category. We're being categorized as addicts because we take the medication, but we are legitimately taking it. So please, I'm begging you put a stop to not only the addiction part, but to the 
ignoring of intractable pain patients. Okay? All my people, I love you guys, and we're not going to stop fighting, okay? So just stay strong. Keep in touch with me. I'll be back on with some more information soon. I'm looking into what I can do. Pray that they put me on this task force because there are areas that are really lacking that would help in, in, enormously to separate us from the addicts, like getting palliative care to us and things like that. Getting palliative care redefined back to what it was originally meant as and what the original definition was, which is a pain and bed-bound state of pain that is non-cancerous, that is for the rest of someone's life. That is what I have, and that is what many of you have. And so we need palliative care. Okay, everyone, so I'm going to leave some things, um, links and things in the um, in the comment section, and I would look at these stories. Also, we need to be prepared to contact officials in our state. Now, I know you've already contacted the DEA, uh, Christine, but, um, you know, the DEA, all they look at is that we're all drug addicts, and they're not looking at the whole picture. We need to get our voices out there in a better way. We need patients that are studied like myself, and we need to get more studies out there. We need to get more diagnosis out there. We need to get your record straight so that they can see that you are in an intractable state of pain and that you need this medication. You're not just an addict wanting drugs. You're in severe pain. That's my cue. God bless you guys. And I will see you soon.